Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Jana and on my channel I show all different kinds of DIYs. In today's video I want to show you guys how I created myself some plates using stonework clay. If you've been following me you might have seen me work with air dry clay before and in those videos many of you guys ask me if you can use air dry clay to make plates or marks and the sad answer is you can't really or at least not if you want them to be food safe and waterproof. So also because of that I wanted to show you an option of how you can create those things at home using stonework clay. So if you potter at home there will be a few things that you need. And the most important one is to find yourself a place in your area that offers a burning service or lets you use their kiln. Unless you want to commit to it straight away and buy yourself one. I found a pottery studio in my area that offers a burning service and even glazes the pieces for me if I want to. But now let's start pottering. Since I'm making plates, which are wide and flat, I chose to begin by cutting slices out of my main block of clay, which comes perfectly wedged out of the pack. Wedging prevents any air bubbles inside the clay. I made myself a simple tool that allows me to cut the block into relatively even slices. As my working surface I use a wooden board that I stapled some fabric onto. That prevents the clay from sticking onto the board. To get an evenly thick slab I use two dowels that I place next to the clay for my rolling pin to roll over. These also determine the thickness of my slab. So in this case I chose 6 mm thick dowels. And I also make sure to flip the clay regularly. For plates it's really important to compress the clay as good as you can to prevent them from cracking or breaking in the kiln. To do that I use my metal rip tool and smoothen out the clay in different directions and on both sides. For the actual shape of the plates, I cut out a paper template that I placed onto the clay slabs and cut around it with my needle tool. I figured the best is to remove the excess clay and leave the actual plate slab to rest for a little while so it's not too wet anymore, otherwise you can easily deform it when you lift it off. At this stage I stamped in my little signature by using rubber letter stamps. So these will be the bottom sides of the plates later. There are different ways to create the rim for a plate. This time I wanted to create a very organic look by using a wooden spatula from the kitchen to slap the rim of my plate and bring it into shape. And in general you can say that the less you move and lift around your slab while you work on it, the flatter the plate will be after the burn. Clay has almost a kind of memory, so even if it seems nice and flat in the wet state, it might start warping while drying or burning. Thankfully most of them came out quite flat anyways. Once I was happy with the shapes I put them aside to let them dry. And again to make sure that the plates stay flat it is best to let them dry on a leveled surface. I use hard wooden boards. To make sure that the rim isn't drying faster than the rest and therefore prevent the clay from cracking, it helps to cover the pieces with a plastic sheet or some newspaper. The drying time can vary a lot depending on the clay thickness, weather conditions and humidity in the space and so on. Once the pieces are bone dry, they can go into their first firing. This is called bisque firing and is normally done between 900 and 1100 degrees Celsius. So for that I packed them up carefully and brought them to the pottery shop. Some pottery studios also offer to glaze your pieces, but I decided to do that on my own. So after they had been fired for the first time, I picked them up again for glazing. Before I start glazing, I wash all the pieces with clear water to make sure that they are dust and fat free. There are many different ways to decorate and glaze your stoneware. 
I really enjoy working with liquid glaze and for the plates I chose three different ones from the brand called Bots. This video is not sponsored, I just like working with it. The colors I picked are beige and a green granite and a basalt grey. I will link it for you in the description box. If you want your pieces to be food safe, make sure to use food safe glaze. Bots, for example, always uses those little icons to show if they are food safe or not, as well as the firing range and other information. If you're not sure about the glaze, maybe ask at your local pottery store. Also, when working with glaze, always make sure to work as clean as possible. Maybe have a wet wipe close to you in case the glaze is dripping. Glaze is basically mineral dust and if it dries, it can get airborne. And as far as I know, you don't want to inhale that. So make sure to rather be safe. I start by stirring up the glaze. If it feels too thick to brush on, you can always add a little splash of water. For brushing the glaze on, I use this fan brush. The first layer I try to brush in one direction and the second layer perpendicular to the first to make sure to cover everything nice and evenly. Most liquid glazes require two to three coats if you brush it on. The color before and after the burn can vary a lot, so this red color actually will be green later. Also make sure to not get any glaze on the bottom area of your pieces as this would make your pieces stick to the kiln plates in the burning process. Then it's waiting again until the glaze is dry. Once they are dry, I go over them one more time to make sure to even out little air bubbles or unevenness. To do that I go outside and wear a mask and gloves because of the mentioned mineral dust. And make sure again the bottom sides are clean. Then the plates can go back on their second travel, back to the pottery store for their second firing. Firing temperatures can vary depending on the glaze that you're using. So in my case it is a stoneware glaze that was fired at 1250 degrees Celsius. And here is how they turned out. Let me know in the comments if you have worked with real clay before. Also, if you have any tips and tricks, feel free to share them with us. Also, feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!